Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about hosting for your HIPAA application. In this particular situation, we're going to dive in on Azure hosting, but you can really work with several different hosting providers. Now, Azure is a cloud hosting provider, and we're going to be talking about cloud hosting in general as well. But you can also work with dedicated hosting providers or virtualized hosting providers. And we're going to dive in and talk in detail about hosting for HIPAA. Now, again, in this particular case, this is a segment in the series on HIPAA that we're covering. And in, in this particular portion of the series, we're talking about recommended partners to work with. Now, the hosting side of things is obviously a very critical aspect, whether you're working on a medical portal, a medical application, a HIPAA e-commerce or pharmacy application, or some form of integration between your systems or all of the above or et cetera. So like fundamentally the hosting could be the number one most attacked segment of your HIPAA infrastructure. If you think about it, it's probably the most vulnerable. So you really want to choose a hosting provider who has done this, who is going to sign off on the BAA, who you understand kind of essentially what exactly is it that they're going to cover and that they're going to be taking care of. And what is your team and your vendor who's working on this hosting or vendors, what are they going to be responsible for? Now, the other thing that we're going to recommend is that in addition to setting up the HIPAA agreement with them, uh, whether it's Azure or AWS or another host that focuses on HIPAA, for example, that we then set up a schedule and assign team members to this project in particular to doing pen tests, to running compliance audits and risk assessments, and then doing due diligence and remediation. Um, if you don't do this, you can basically expect that there's going to be a problem. Over the years of having literally almost a decade and a half now of HIPAA compliance work that we've been doing as of this video, I can tell you for sure if you don't maintain and manage and take a proactive stance with your hosting in particular, there will be breach attempts. And unfortunately, we've worked with a handful of clients who have come to us and let us know that, you know, before working with us, their system was breached and they needed someone who could fix it. Uh, this is a really unfortunate situation to be in. And we encourage you to take it very seriously and to understand that the hosting is probably the weakest link. So anyway, with that, let's dive in. We're going to do a deep dive into Azure hosting in particular. Now, Azure has a really interesting model where they basically give you these subscriptions and then resources within those subscriptions. And the resources are in resource groups. So you have a subscription resource group and then the actual resources. So what we're looking at are kind of those resources. And this is really helpful because the actual resource groups can be set up to be in different regions. The subscriptions can be set up to be within different organizations or subdivisions, et cetera, subsidiaries, et cetera, of a company. And fundamentally, what we're going to be looking at here is kind of the most granular level items within that hosting. Now, typically when you think about hosting a HIPAA application, you're really gonna be dealing with just a few fundamental things and then a lot of supporting actors, if you will. So number one is either a virtual machine or an app service. Now these are vernacular kind of dialect for Azure, but you'll see that AWS has their own terminology. Some of the different hosting providers that specialize in HIPAA hosting have their own terminology. What you need to get down to is that you basically have where is the application hosted, and then in the case of Azure, Azure SQL, where is the database hosted? Now there's a lot more detail to it than just that, but that's kind of the fundamental and that's what we want you to take away is that basically with Azure, we're dealing with virtual machines and app services to host the application and then Azure SQL to host the database. Now we're gonna briefly dive into these, but before we do, I wanna just talk a little bit about what is, what is Azure doing for HIPAA and how are they protecting clients who go to them and work with them for uh, HIPAA-based hosting? Well, in general, 
one of the really interesting things about um, about Microsoft's offering is they actually have. Let me see if I can get to it. Okay, so they have a lot of different offerings for uh, their compliance capabilities. So here you can see a resource, and this is a probably somewhat outdated as of the time of this video, um, but a pretty detailed listing, as you can see, of the different resources that they, you know, some of the different compliance capabilities that they have. And so these are just kind of a laundry list of things that they can do. Now you can see they have HIPAA and then uh, HIPAA in the high tech. And this is really, really key because one of the things that they also have for HIPAA is a blueprint. Now you might say, what is a blueprint? This is for the Azure hosting environment. This is basically a turnkey model with very specific steps. Think of a blueprint for a house where you can design, uh, you can take a design that's already in place and then just execute against that for the hosting. And this is really, really helpful, as you can imagine, to be able to ensure that you're offering a HIPAA compliant hosting, you're taking a literally a over trillion in market cap company and leveraging their blueprint for HIPAA compliance. It's definitely not a guarantee that it's going to go perfectly, but if you had to go with something, that's a pretty safe bet, at least as a starting place. Now, this is just kind of a deep dive example, and I'm not gonna actually go through it in detail in this video, but you can see we will have the links for these in the description and in the content, but you can go through quite a bit of detail with these blueprints. Now, if you think about it, if you're working with a development team, if you're working with an internal or external vendor for this um, or internal resource, they can go to the blueprint and they can go to this deep dive set of resources and then you can audit and review and make sure that they're compliant with these. Now, some of these steps do take some time to complete, but at the end of the day, your organization is really required to meet industry best practices for HIPAA. And this means complying with the security and the privacy rules. Well, this blueprint and this detailed dive on how to do it within Azure, um, it's really going to be helpful so that you can show, hey, we did this. We went through this blueprint and we verified that we are compliant in these ways. And then the really cool thing that Azure does is they have a security center. They have a capability of auditing and proactively monitoring the HIPAA itself and HIPAA compliance rules within these resource groups and within the resources that are in that resource group. So you can actually go through a checklist within the Azure portal, and then you can verify that everything is secure. Uh, this is really, really awesome. Um, it makes it very straightforward to be able to see that there are issues and then remediate those and then have logs and documentation that you can pump back into, as we talked about earlier, some of the risk compliance and just overall compliance management tools uh, that are available for you to use. Now, going back to some of these resources, uh, we have virtual machines, we have app services, and then the Azure SQL. Now, again, if you're working with a uh, AWS in, in some other similar environment that is a you know a dedicated hosting solution or etc. They're, they're gonna have different names than this. But the main idea is that you want to confirm where the application is hosted and how it is secured. And I'm going to just kind of verbally describe a few things that are really important. You'll wanna kind of get into more detail than this, but I'm gonna give you some key points. And then similarly for the database side of things. Now, essentially what you wanna look for on the application side of things is are the actual files encrypted whenever they're sitting at rest? Are the connection strings and any sensitive data actually encrypted and where possible removed from the application files? Um, is there a kind of minimum necessary access that's set up with this infrastructure? And generally speaking, you want to operate the application itself in layers so that any kind of sensitive data is not accessible from the web endpoints so whenever you have public facing information, you want to have that kind of sitting behind login screens and etc. But in addition, if there's any kind of PHI data or any kind of data that you would want to really heavily secure, 
you probably want that data to be accessible only by a kind of internal application that is essentially behind another layer of security. Uh, you can think of this as like a bank. If you have a bank and you have an out, outdoor entrance, this is kind of like the public website, but then you have a vault inside of the bank. So all of the, the sensitive, very secure items are gonna be inside of that vault, right? So it's the same idea for your PHI data. You're going to want it to be inside of a vault, if you will. Now this can be mechanically tokenized, tokenized data. Uh, it can be several different applications where the kind of more sensitive data is in a kind of internal only accessible application. There really is a lot to the app service and the virtual machine side of things. We cover a lot of this though, whenever we talked about the uh, pen testing and some of the basically continuous notification and verification of any kind of breaches, uh, any kind of security risks. And then again, within Azure's infrastructure as a service or platform as a service offering, they have a security center. The same concept exists within uh, AWS, within a lot of these other HIPAA hosting providers. So you're going to want to make sure that this gets set up for Azure or whatever hosting infrastructure you're using. Now, in addition to that, you have the SQL side of things. The SQL side of things is really where things typically are going to be persisted. Now, if you're using a NoSQL layer, the same concept applies. We basically want to make sure that things are encrypted at rest. And ideally, there's some form of tokenization going on. So if your application gets breached for whatever reason, your sensitive data is typically going to be in your data layer. And this is going to be your database or your NoSQL database, for example. Now, in this particular layer and in any kind of caching layers, there is a great risk that any kind of performance tuning or caching or any kind of general tuning that you may have uh, it could really hold sensitive information as part of that tuning where information is kind of getting cached in an insecure way. So you want to be careful about that in general. And then generally speaking, you want to make sure that your SQL is actually encrypting data at rest. Now, Azure offers as part of their Azure, Azure SQL, they offer the capability to have the data encrypted at rest, but you have to turn this on. Now, whenever you're working with Azure SQL, it is going to have a, again, blueprint that you can follow, which is awesome. So we encourage you to, whether you're doing this internally or you're working with a vendor, make sure that the vendor is actually going to follow the blueprint for HIPAA or that they're going to provide some kind of documentation about what their process is that they're completing. Whether, again, it's your internal team or an external team, make sure that they're setting this up properly for you. Okay, now in a future video, we are going to do a deep dive into Azure's HIPAA compliance capabilities, take a look at their blueprints and actually go into their security center or their defender resources and make sure that we go through a sample of what it's like implementing this along with some of the other pen testing tools, CDN, and some of the compliance management tools that we've talked about in this series. For today, for this video, what we wanna leave you with is that as any good vendor relationship would require, you do wanna make sure that you get the latest BAA document from Microsoft and that you understand what it is that they're going to cover and what they're not going to cover. And this is true for AWS or any other hosting provider that you work with. Please make sure that you read this document Make sure that your technical team reads this document and that you actually understand what is and isn't covered. In addition, this to just kind of generally making sure you're covered legally, this kind of forces your team to really think through everything once more. And the whole idea of HIPAA, as you can see from this series, is we're really kind of forcing these behaviors to happen within the organization that's going to put best practices in place that prevent just obvious glaring issues from happening from a security, privacy, and just general management of this PHI data perspective, okay? But here I am, I'm on the Microsoft site. You can literally type in Azure Hosting BAA. Uh, you can find this page really easily that way. Um, I, you can also look for their data protection resources. 
Uh, but you can simply go to this page, type in HIPAA, and you'll find the uh, latest HIPAA BAA as of this recording. Of course, this is going to be updated since then. One of the things that we want to leave you with on the Azure hosting and just in general for hosting is that it is highly recommended that you work with an expert in this area. In particular, this is really one of the most sensitive areas of the process because this is your public facing, typically your public facing infrastructure. Okay, so if there is going to be a breach, it's typically going to start with anything that's public facing, typically. It can happen internally, it can happen on an internal network too, but generally speaking, it's going to be most commonly from a public facing endpoint, if you will. So please, as we, as we say you know, many times in this series, make sure that you work with an expert who kind of understands your situation and can help assess that in detail. If you choose to work with the Clarity team, you can work with us through the training and kind of the self-service portal. So you can actually access a program that will walk you through the steps to make sure that you're reasonably HIPAA compliant and aware and then recommend best practices for your particular scenario. In addition, you can also engage us or another vendor. And ultimately, we just wanna make sure that your team has what you need so that you can protect your PHI data securely. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.